proper integrals, we want to be able to talk about how to integrate an integral if it's either at infinity, so if one of the limits is at infinity, or both of the limits could be at infinity, or if you have a discontinuity of the function at a particular value on the interval. Uh, say, for example, if you are integrating uh, 1 over x as um, x is on the interval from uh, negative 5 to 5, well, you have discontinuity of 1 over x at x equal to 0. So at x equal 0, you would have there a limit at infinity. There, that would be also uh, 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 seen as an improper integral. Uh, typically, when we have the uh, integral at infinity, then you can represent uh, this as a limit as b goes infinity from a to b, f of x dx, and integrate as normal, and then evaluate the result of the limit um, of the integral by the limit. <clears throat> Whether uh, if it's from the integrals from negative infinity to b, uh, we can represent this as the limit as a goes to negative infinity, the integral from a to b, uh, evaluate the integral, and then from there evaluate uh, the result of that based on the limit. If you have uh, a function f continuous on this uh, interval from negative infinity to positive infinity f of x dx. We're going to break this up into two piecewise integrals. Here one from negative infinity to some uh, midpoint value, any number between negative infinity and positive infinity. So from negative infinity to c, some number c, on that interval f of x dx plus from the interval from c to positive infinity uh, f of x dx. Oh, I'm wearing the hat because I got to go to the barber. My barber uh, messed me up the last time, got my line in the front just all out of whack. Sometimes there's an easy case. If you have the integral from 1 to infinity of dx over x to the p, we talk about this as the p test, that um, we have convergence if p is greater than 1, and that integral would be equal to directly 1 over p minus 1, and we get divergence if p is less than or equal to 1. Now, a note here that if the, the limit of these integrals exists, we say that the improper integral converges. So if the limit exists, we have convergence. If the limit does not exist, then the integral is set to diverge. Well, let's look at uh, some problems here. Now, this first one, you can use that p-test uh, to work it out. Uh, notice here that p is equal to 3. It's greater than 1. So this implies that we have convergence. And so based on that theorem, the, the limit is equal to 1 over 3 minus 1, or 1 half. Well, let's say if you didn't know that, you want to work this out just the old-fashioned way. So this is the limit as b goes to infinity of the integral from 1 to b of 1 over x to the third dx. So this is the limit. Yes, as b goes to infinity of the integral from 1 to b x to the negative 3 dx. We integrate. This is the limit as b goes to infinity of x to the negative 3 plus 1. That's negative 2 all over negative 2. Evaluate it from 1 to b. So this is the limit as b goes to infinity of we plug in x to b uh, b so this is negative 1 over b squared and then minus that 1 half so we get plus 1 over 2 uh, plug in x equal to 1 that's just uh, 1 over uh, 1 squared Now, as b goes to infinity, 1 over b squared goes to 0. So the limit here is 1 half.
again, notice that P here is one-third, and this number here is, is less than, right? Is it less than or equal to 1? So this implies that the integral diverges by the p-test. Well, if you don't believe that, you can, can work it out. This is the limit as b goes to infinity of the integral from 1 to b. This is 3 times x to the negative 1 third dx. We work that out. This is the limit as b goes to infinity. This is 3 times x to the negative 1 third plus 1. That's negative 1 third plus 3 over 3. So we get 2 thirds. This is divided by 2 thirds here and x is evaluated from 1 to b. Now, now in the front of this limit we have a number that's uh, 9 over 2. So we have 9 halves times the limit as b goes to infinity of x to the 2 thirds that's evaluated from 1 to b. So we get 9 over 2 times the limit as b goes to infinity. Replace here the x with b, so this is b to the 2 thirds, and then minus, replace the b with 1, minus 1. Now as b goes to infinity, b to the 2 thirds also goes to infinity, and infinity minus 1 is infinity. If the limit is infinity, then we have here the integral is said to diverge. For this uh, problem, we use how uh, we define the improper integral. This is the limit as b goes to infinity of the integral from 0 to b, x squared times e to the negative x dx. Now, we have to use integration by parts. I will use the shortcut, the tabular method. So we write out x squared, take its derivative, we get 2x, that derivative is 2 and then 0, alternate the signs, then we integrate this e to the negative x, and that gives us negative e to the negative x. Integrate that, gives us negative times the negative, so we get positive e to the negative x. Integrate this, we get negative e to the negative x. The signs, the signs alternate, and then the terms um, here on that diagonal slant. So we get the limit. As b goes to infinity of this is negative x squared over e to the x minus 2x over e to the x minus 2 over e to the x right? evaluate it from 0 to b And this is the limit as b goes to infinity of negative b squared over e to the b minus 2b over e to the b minus 2 over e to the b. That's evaluated at x equal to b. Now minus at x equal to 0. 
So we, here we plug in x to be 0, we get uh, minus this minus is plus 0. Minus this minus is plus. If x is 0, we get 0. And then minus this minus is plus 2, right, over e to the 0, which is 1. So 2 divided by 1 is just 2. Now, the only limit that we can evaluate here is this 2 over e to the b. That goes to 0. But this is an indeterminate form. And this is also an indeterminate form. So this goes to 0. Here we have infinity over infinity. And here we have infinity over infinity. So because of that, we have to apply L'Hopital's rule to these two terms. So applying L'Hopital, we have the limit as b goes to infinity. Take the derivative of this. This is negative 2b over the derivative of e to the b is e to the b. Well, b is set to be a variable, not a, not a fixed number. This is minus 2 over e to the b. Now, the limit of a constant is a constant, so we finish there with the limit. This is plus 2 sitting out there. Now, you evaluate this as b goes to infinity. We get 0. This is infinity divided by infinity, or, or negative infinity, even back here. Negative infinity divided by infinity, which is still, OK, infinity over infinity. So anytime we have an indeterminate form, we have to apply L'Hopital's rule. So this is the limit as b goes to infinity. Take the derivative of the numerator, we get negative 2 over e to the b. This is plus 2. Now, we evaluate this. A fixed number divided by infinity, this guy goes to 0. So the result here is 2. So again, anytime you have infinity over infinity, L'Hopital's rule. Moving on. Here, this is the limit as b goes to infinity of the integral from 4 to b of 1 over x times the natural log of x to the third dx. Looks like we can use the u du substitution. Let u equal to the natural log of x. I'm not doing so good. I know. Let's take a crash course in writing. Let u equal to the natural log of x. So then this implies that du is equal to 1 over x dx. So the u would be the natural log of x, and the 1 over x dx would represent here the du, or the du would represent that. So this is the limit as b goes to infinity of the integral from 4 to b. And this is 1 over u to the third du. I'm going to write that as, if, if that's OK, u to the negative 3 u to the negative 3 du. And so the next step, we just integrate. Put this in a bag. So this is the limit as 
B goes to infinity. We integrate. <clears throat> this is u to the negative 3 plus 1 is u to the negative 2 all over negative 2. Evaluation from 4 to B. Um, I'm going to put here the negative 1 half out in the front times the limit as B goes to infinity. And this u to the second goes downstairs, 1 over u, but u is the natural log of, of x to the second. This is evaluated from 4 to b. So we have negative 1 half times the limit as b goes to infinity of 1 over the natural log of b squared minus 1 over the natural log of 4 squared. Right? Now 1 over the natural log of b, well natural log of b is going to infinity, 1 over infinity goes to 0. So all we have left is negative 1 half times this negative 1 over the natural log of 4 to be squared. So we get positive 1 over 2 times the natural log of 4 to be squared. All right? And you can write that as, you take that natural log of 4 and write that as 2 times the natural log of 2. Square that 2 on the outside, that'll be 4 times 2. That'll give you 8. You can, you know, or doesn't matter, 1 over 8 times the natural log of 2 to be squared. So we take this guy and we're going to write him as the integral from negative infinity to 0. I break it up at 0. 4 over, let's write that as 4 squared plus x squared dx plus the integral from 0 to positive infinity of 4 all over 4 squared plus x squared dx. Here's a known form. that any time that we have the integral of 1 over a squared plus x squared dx, that this is equal to 1 over a times the tan inverse of x over a if it's indefinite plus c. So we use that to our advantage. And if that be the case, then we have here, don't forget the 4 there. So this is, and, and if you if it's OK, I'm going to leave my negative infinities and the infinity there. It's just. Uh, an, an old-fashioned method without even saying the limit. We, I know that it's going to be the limit. So here, this integral uh, would be 4 over 4, right? So this is the 4 from the numerator over, you know, times 1 over 4 times the tan inverse of x over 4, and that's evaluated from negative infinity to 0 plus the same thing, right? So 4 divided by 4 is going to go out. So this is just the tan inverse of x over 4. And this has been evaluated from 0 to infinity. So this is tan inverse of 0 minus 
the tan inverse of negative infinity plus tan inverse, that's sloppy, of infinity minus the tan inverse of zero. Well, the tan of zero is zero. Right? And this is minus. What about this? This tan inverse of negative infinity, or even the positive infinity, right? So here, let's note that. So if tan inverse of y is equal to x, then y is equal to tangent of x, right? So if that be the case, then here, so tan inverse of infinity, here this is negative infinity, So infinity is equal to x, then, then here we say that tangent of x is equal to negative infinity. Well, uh, the tangent is the sine over cosine, and the sine uh, oscillates between negative 1 and 1 and so when sine is negative 1 that uh, would imply that uh, x or theta would be uh, negative power over 2 and so, and so here this implies that x is equal to negative power over 2 and, and for the other value if tan inverse of infinity is equal to x, then tan x is equal to infinity. This is at here at x equal to, again, tangent and sine of cosine, um, the, the, the main values that we have for the interval to determine the, the interval here for a, um, uh, an os one oscillation <coughs> or um, a cycle, uh, sine goes from negative 1 to 1, such that the values would be from theta would go from negative power over 2 to positive power over 2. So here we have positive uh, power over 2. Now, you know that's also uh, defined at infinity because that sine over cosine, cosine, um, uh, 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 is at infinity for that denominator where you get zero at x equal to uh, negative power over two and positive power over two. And so we have the restrictions and so uh, uh, we have uh, 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 isentotic uh, graph uh, for the, uh, the tangent, the uh, secant and the cosecant and the cotangent, right? Uh, and so and so here the, the tangent is going from negative power over 2 to positive uh, power over 2. So anyway, uh, this tangent, tangent inverse of negative um, in, at negative infinity gives us negative power over 2 plus the tangent inverse of infinity that gives us power over 2, then minus 0. Well, that just gives us pi. Okay, we calculate this. This is the the limit as b goes to infinity of the integral from zero to b of cosine pi x dx. We integrate there. This is the limit as b goes to infinity of sine 
power over x. If you use a u du substitution, and the u would be pi x, and the du is pi dx, and so we get uh, 1 over pi dx represents the du. So this is sine pi, over, pi times x all over pi. Let's evaluate it from 0 to b. So we have the limit as b goes to infinity of this sine pi times b over pi minus sine of 0, which is 0. We get the limit here of sine of infinity, but we do not have uh, he, uh, here any value of such uh, uh, to be able to say that the limit is captured, is captured there. We have it for isentotic values, right? But but here we have no uh, isentope. Uh, we have no upper or lower bound, or, or even you know restrictions with the vertical uh, 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 isentotic uh, nature. And so this guy here, um, there is no value. Or, or you could say infinity, or really, it, uh, th there there is no no there is no number that we can say that uh, sine is approaching. Just uh, one more here. Use the results blah 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 and to determine whether the improper integral converges or diverges well with this guy uh, is set to uh, div uh, excuse me is set to converge because p is equal to 5 so this is equal to 1 over 5 minus 1 we get 1 fourth by the that p test here where P is equal to 5, it's greater than 1. This implies that this uh, integral converges. I think that's it. Thank you.